Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to our youtube channel CD engineering academy so in today's video we will discuss the exercise problem of the combined stress uh, chapter so we have problem 902 the problem statement is compare the maximum stress in a bent rod half inch square where the load P is of center as shown in figure with the maximum stress if the rod were straight and the load applied axially. This problem illustrate why lateral deflection in column is so dangerous. So dear students, we have a column and it's half inch bent or it's, it has half inch lateral deflection. So here the forces are applied and the question is that compute the maximum combined stresses, the maximum stresses in this bent rod and compare it with the rod if it is straight instead of bend uh, compare it with a straight rod so we will see that how much difference is between the stresses of the uh, straight rod and bent rod and this is a practical related example it illustrates that why lateral deflection is column is so dangerous so at the end we would get this point by comparing the stresses of the bent rod and the stresses of the straight rod so now let's come toward the solution here it's the diagram of the bent rod here the forces are applied at the end and when we cut a section at the mid and uh, draw the free body diagram of that section so here force is applied at the middle uh, or we can say at the centroid of this section here I have shown this cross-sectional view of this bent rod so here this force axial force is applied at the cross-section at the centroid of the cross-section and this axial force is actually a compression because it's towards the cross section so if we look towards these two forces these two forces are not along the same line of action so when we apply equilibrium condition or this free body diagram we must have to stable this body or we must say that this must be in equilibrium so when we look over these two forces, these are two same forces but in opposite direction and these two forces are creating a couple. So this couple is actually an anti-clockwise. So to keep it in equilibrium, we have to apply a clockwise movement here. We have to put a clockwise movement here so to keep it in equilibrium. Actually these two forces are creating an anti-clockwise couple so to keep this in equilibrium we have to put here or we have to apply here a clockwise movement so to keep the body in equilibrium and what's the value of movement will be the value of movement will be this p multiplied by this is intensity or this distance movement so it becomes p multiplied half inch and if we uh, apply movement here what will be direction of the movement so the direction of movement will be this one this one your uh, fingers will be towards the movement and this finger will show the direction of the bending movement so is direction is towards the negative z uh, if this is our z axis this axis will be positive and this axis will be negative so here the bending moment is like this so our thumb will show the negative bending moment okay so from the free body diagram we have px is equal to minus b because it's here the force is compression and the bending moment about z axis is negative so here the bending moment is force into this moment which is half inch so here it's the value of bending moment which is about z axis so in order to find the stresses 
we know that force the relationship between the force and stresses are usually uh, made through the geometric properties so first we have to find the geometric properties if you have any problem uh, related to geometric properties i have uploaded the videos please watch those then uh, we have to find the area to dear students we know that its uh, cross section is square shape and its uh, area will be uh, bh so here uh, both are same and its half inch so half inch multiply half inch it will become 1 by 4 inch square so now we have to calculate the moment of inertia about z axis why about z axis because uh, here the moment is only about z axis in this uh, combined stress formula we have to calculate the values up to this limit why because the moment about y axis is not given so this value will become zero so we will calculate here only the moment of inertia about the z axis and then uh, let's come towards the moment of inertia it will becomes about z axis this will be our base and this will be our height so it will becomes bh cube uh, by 12 uh, this is h cube so when we calculate it will become 1 by 92 inch power 4 so this is the expression of the combined stresses which is this part is the axial stress this is moment about z this is moment about y this is axial and this both are flexural stresses so here the axial force is compressional force so here the px will be minus p so px will be minus p and its area will be uh, 1 by 4 plus p. mz value is minus p by 2 so here uh, we have one uh, minus sign in the equation and its moment is also negative so uh, uh, take care of this uh, signs so it will becomes minus into minus p by 2 divided by its uh, moment of inertia about z axis so its value is 1 by 9 1 divided by 92 and here the y is the distance from the neutral axis to the fiber that we are locating the stresses so simplify this okay so minus 4p plus 96py this is the fiber stress equation so whenever we have to apply uh, force and when we want to locate the stresses at any fiber just put the value of y means put the value of the location of the uh, fiber from the neutral axis and it will give you the value of the combined stress so in order to locate the neutral axis that where is my neutral axis just uh, equate the equation of the fiber stress that we have found earlier uh, equal to 0 and then find the value of y from it you will get the uh, location of the neutral axis so here when we take this fiber stress equation equal to 0 and we solve it y uh, becomes equal to plus 1 by 24 it means that the neutral axis have shifted upward by this distance okay so when we find the stresses at the top and bottom fiber throughout this cross section are at the point where we have put a cut in the section so actually uh, in the question is that we have to find the stresses the maximum stresses that where are the maximum stresses compute the maximum stress so we have to uh, put the value of the y at the top of the fiber and the bottom of the fiber in this fiber stress equation so so when we have to calculate the stress at the top and bottom fiber just put the value of y at the top of fiber and bottom of the fiber means the location so this means we know that uh, this distance this distance was uh, half inch and here from the mid 
to the tag will be 1 by 4 it will be half of this so just put 1 over 4 here uh, the distance to top and minus 1 over 4 the bottom the distance to the bottom fiber will be minus 1 over 4 okay so put this minus 1 over 4 in the same equation uh, solve this you will uh, find the value of the stress here at the top the value of the stress is 20p and here at the bottom the value of the stress fiber stress equation it will be minus 28p so here which value is more the minus 28 is more so here at bottom the stresses will be high okay also we have to draw this uh, flat stress diagram for our convenience you can also draw this just uh, show 20 plus 20 uh, at the top and minus 28 at the bottom uh, here about neutral accelerant becomes zero the stresses become zero because it's the definition of the neutral axis that it have no stresses when draw this flexural, flexural stress diagram here the maximum stress in the bent bar the bar that have half inch lateral deflection the stress is in the maximum stress is in that bent bar is minus 28 so then we have to calculate the stresses in the straight bar here at the cross section only the axial force is applied so here only axial stresses will generate when we uh, compute the equation of combined stresses the flexural stresses will eliminate here because here no moment is produced only compressional forces are applied so uh, we have to uh, write the value of the combined stress equation is equal to p by a the other terms will become zero here p px will be minus p as from the free body diagram minus because here it's compression compressional force area is one over four when we solve that it becomes minus four p so when we uh, take the ratio of the stresses of the bend bar to the straight bar the bend bar stresses were minus 28p and the straight bar stress were minus 4p so we take the ratio of these two and its the ratio is 7 what does it mean it it means that the stresses in the bend bar is 7 times more than the stresses in the straight bar it means that the stresses in the bend bar is seven times more than the stresses in the straight bar if we have stresses of 600 psi in the straight bar the stresses in the bend bar will be seven times more than 600 so its value will be 4200 psi which are very high stresses as compared to 600 psi so here it shows that why the lateral deflection is column is so dangerous if we put a column in the uh, building and it's slightly deflect or it has slightly uh, lateral deflection it will have high stresses seven times high stresses than the straight bar so there is a chances of failure of the structure. So this friend, this was our question. If it was helpful to you, kindly subscribe our channel, share with your friends, and we will meet in the next video. Kindly subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you could get the latest notification or of our problems that we are uploading. Inshallah we will meet in the next video thanks for watching